Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization and today is another marathon video. This is over two hours, almost two and a half hours of fridge and freezer organizing, some tips and tricks, products that I love to use. And this video is extra fun because not only is it really long, you can just press play while you organize your fridge and freezer and do it along with me but also because I have five different refrigerators and freezers that I'm including in this video. Yes, five, because it goes back all the way to my first apartment I had after law school where I'm cleaning it. I also have some videos from my first apartment after I got married. Then when we moved into this house, we have a fridge and freezer upstairs and downstairs. We recently got a new refrigerator and freezer upstairs. So I have organizing and cleaning of all of those different product recommendations, food storage tips. I also have a little bit on freezer organization in particular and some products and ways that I love to store freezer meals included in here. So whether you have a side-by-side, -side, a pull-out, maybe you have a spare basement refrigerator like we do or a garage refrigerator and you're wondering how to organize beverages and extra foods, I have it all covered in this video. All of the organizing and cleaning motivation for your fridge and freezer. So with that, press play and I would love if you organize and clean your fridge and freezer along with me. It takes me through the night. Today is the day that we are finally going to get our new refrigerator organized. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that we bought a new refrigerator because our previous one died. It was just not getting cold enough in there. The freezer was still working, but we decided instead of paying a bunch of money to have somebody come out and potentially repair the fridge, we didn't like that one anyway because it was a side-by-side -side and we really wanted a French door one. You can see it doesn't fully fit. I'm in love with it. The only thing I don't like about it is that it comes out just a little bit far and maybe doesn't have as much height as it could, but still I'm fine with it. If we ever try and sell our house and new owners don't like it, they can buy a new fridge. I'm just all about maximizing the space and it is crazy the amount of stuff I can fit in this. So step one of organizing your fridge is always to take everything out. I gave it a quick wipe down. It didn't need a lot of deep cleaning because it's new and we've only had it for a couple of weeks, but still even then there's stuff to clean up. With everything out of the refrigerator, I can play around with some of the new deep organizers I got. And this is one of the best ways that you can take advantage of the depths of some of these deeper refrigerators. Because although it's great to have a refrigerator that's deep, if you don't have a way to get to the items in the back, it's just gonna be wasted space and you're not gonna be taking advantage of it. So these organizers, I will link in the description box below. You'll see some of them are a little bit narrower, a couple are wider. So I was just playing around with what fits best and going to organize them while the refrigerator is closed and I can keep that cold air in. I'm doing a few for fruit and vegetables that I always have on hand. We always have avocados. I always have lemons and limes for water, but also for cooking. And then typically have apples, but it rotates. Sometimes I'll have kiwis or clementines or mangoes. So I think that might end up being a miscellaneous fruit bin. And then on the top there, I am going to do one for veggies and another one for kids' pouches or kids' snacks. And I am gonna put the ones that are most frequently used lower down so I don't have to pull them out every time and can reach my hand in there and grab stuff. The other higher up ones that I don't use as often, I'm okay with pulling them out. It's almost like a little drawer there. It's making me hot and he has the same effect on me. I act a little dumber when I try to get his number up so nervous that I'm losing grip on myself. I get a little starstruck when I see him. I couldn't hate him even if I tried. Am I a little crazy to believe that I could wake up with him by my side? I know I could get his attention if I worked it all out. And we got a little tipsy on a Saturday night. Yeah, I want him and I need him. He's got a one-way, one-way, one-way ticket to my heart. 
and you'll see the configuration of our refrigerator is that we have two larger drawers there. I'm gonna do one for packaged veggies, like if I get a salad mix or other things like that, and then loose veggies like those bell peppers or cucumbers, I am putting in that top bin that I organized. The other bin is going to be for dairy and cheeses and the bottom really thin one. I've been playing around with it. I have meat in there right now, but I've also thought about when we buy fruits and stuff, that could be a good spot to put those thin packages of berries, but that space might have to evolve. One of the biggest mistakes you can do if you are organizing your refrigerator is getting organizing happy and actually over organizing your space and not leaving room for leftovers. A lot of times I see images on like Pinterest or Instagram or even watch YouTube videos where people organize their refrigerator and I think to myself, where the heck do they put all of their leftovers or the food that they cook, things that are in the middle stages. I do a lot of meal prepping, so I made sure to keep as much space as I could for all of those foods that don't necessarily always have a home. We opted for a refrigerator that has a slim panel on the outside for a water dispenser and ice is made in the freezer. That means that we have a lot more space in the door and I'm really happy that we did that. The doors are so deep. I have so much storage space. We can fit a gallon of milk on the door there, which is a game changer compared to our old refrigerator. And something else that I had bought for our previous refrigerator is this glass pitcher that I had to decant our milk into because the gallon size just didn't really fit and took up too much space. I put it in our basement refrigerator. I now have space that I can make spa waters like infused with fruits or cucumbers or what I'm doing right now is making myself some iced tea. The door I had already kind of organized when I put things in here. I'm not gonna buy more organizers for the door, so there's not much rearranging I'm doing here. I do favor the right-hand side of the fridge, so I decided to put my most used items there. I don't know if it's because I'm right-handed and like pulling that door open a little bit more, but I have some drinks on the bottom, main condiments like ketchup, mustard, hot sauces, and then at the top I have butter. On the left side, I have things that I use least often. I think there's tahini up there some miso paste and then I have miscellaneous a lot of Asian type sauces and things like that like fish sauce or chili sauce and then below that I have jams and syrup and other jars and containers I might be in the middle of using like if there's a jar of pasta sauce I plan to put that there there was a chicken stock that was half used that I put there so again I'm trying to leave things open so there's room for things that I might not necessarily have at this very moment while I'm organizing my refrigerator so I thought I was almost done and then I got an idea that I had this really large lazy Susan in the pantry and I just want to play around with it before I go and buy one for my refrigerator because of how deep this is I thought it might be a good idea to use one of the deeper lazy Susans for little items and right now I just put pickles on there but since since I filmed this video, I have put some of my small little Tupperware containers on there, little dips and sauces that I make, and I'm so happy having that large Lazy Susan there that I am going to keep it and order a new one to replace that one that I stole from my pantry. For the refrigerator, I'm not gonna do a ton of labeling. I don't wanna label the actual refrigerator itself, most things in the refrigerator are clear and self-explanatory and I don't want to over label because things do tend to turn over in the refrigerator as I've been explaining but the bins that I added in the organizers I am going to make some fun little labels because also it just looks really pretty so I'm going to make some for the fruit and the veggies and keep them as generic as possible I did opt to write one that says avocado and my husband already mentioned like are you sure you're always going to have avocados so I might relabel that to be more of like a miscellaneous one but we'll see how it works out the other ones I feel very confident in my label choices Mistakes. It's 
just the way I am. That's why. I do get questions about these labels, how they do in the refrigerator and the freezer. They do really well. They also do really well in the dishwasher from my experience, depending on what organizers you put them on. If you wanna hand wash the organizers or dishwash them, you wanna be careful because some types of organizers, the plastic ones will melt in the dishwasher. But these types of labels are available on my website for purchase. I haven't done this custom combination of the two fonts before, but if you're ever interested in something custom just like send me a message there's a contact form there or let me know what you're looking for specifically This was such a fast project and if I didn't make those labels, it would have been even faster. So this is your sign to go organize your refrigerator. It took me like less than 30 minutes. Thanks so much for joining me. Make sure to like and subscribe and here is the final after. Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome to what was probably the quickest organizing project I've ever done. And today I'm gonna to be organizing my new freezer. We just got this fridge and freezer. I previously shared a video where I was organizing the refrigerator part, so I will make sure to link that if you have not seen it already. But I thought I would separate it out and do the freezer another day. Today is the day. And you'll see step one after I took a quick before picture of what it looked like is to take everything out of the freezer. When you're working with your fridge and freezer, it's good for it to be a quick organizing project because you don't want things to be out of the cold for too long, especially with the freezer, you don't want things to melt. So I had a timeline and a mission and was gonna get this thing done. Seriously took me less than 30 minutes to organize this freezer. And if you stay tuned till the very end, I do a little bit of reorganizing in our basement freezer as well. You'll see I'm playing around with some organizers that I got just to see what fits best in here and finally found a configuration that I think is gonna work. I also quickly ran downstairs to grab some organizers from that freezer because this is our back stock area. I want my primary organizers and want things to be the most organized in this freezer. And then I will go back and figure out the basement freezer after, but I want this to be the priority. All of these different organizers that I'm using, I will make sure to link in the description box if you're interested. So check all of that out for the links to all of the organizers. Before you go too crazy organizing things in a refrigerator or freezer, you have to know the types of foods that you regularly have versus the ones that might just be a little bit of a one-off situation and are in there for the moment, but you don't typically have them. You don't wanna find a permanent home for those types of foods because you're just gonna end up with more organizing problems later on. So what I am doing is making one bin right now for kids food and another bin for breakfast foods. There's some pre-made breakfast burritos and sandwiches, waffles. And then in the kids one, we have been getting a lot of these little smoothie pops. They are from Thrive Market. And I did a review of my thoughts on Thrive Market if you are interested in a healthier grocery delivery service it might be something to check out especially if you have kids they have really great options for kids but some of those breakfast foods are also from thrive market and i did include a few of his homemade pouches in there as well and i made him some homemade yogurt melts that i put in there but the idea is that it's just a general category breakfast and kid and it can rotate as to what is in there i
Now with those large bins that are gonna go down lower, I am playing around there. I have another kid food bin. I do a lot of meal prepping. If you follow me and my channel, you know that I often cook double batches of things, but I meal prep things specifically for our child. So always have things in the freezer for him. Have one bin dedicated to that. I'm gonna do another bin of meat, I think. So I put some bacon in there and just wanted to take a quick pause, get a few more things off the countertop because I know the frozen fruit is one of the largest categories I have and they are large bags as well and don't need to be put in their own organizers. So I put those in there and then we had a few bags of frozen zucchini noodles that my sister-in-law was nice enough to make and give to us from her garden. Those are not something we typically have, but take up a lot of room. So I'll put that also on the right-hand side there with the large bags of frozen fruit. I love buying bulk meat from Costco. I think it is pretty economical to do that, but I also like the fact that it's just convenient to always have frozen chicken or ground beef, ground turkey, frozen shrimp, whatever it is in the freezer at all times and not have to worry about it. The biggest tip I will make is if you're gonna freeze it, especially this chicken, is cut the chicken breasts apart before you freeze it. I don't know why this time I didn't do it. I think I was in such a rush and just put the whole pack of chicken in the freezer instantly regretted it the second I tried to cut these apart. It's just so much more difficult. And beyond that meat bin that I have there, I have a miscellaneous bin. I have some frozen bread. It is a healthier bread that needs to be frozen and also some frozen veggies in there, but that's probably just gonna be a little bit of a loose category for me. This fun organizer has different dividers that you can move back and forth depending on what you have in there. So I'm trying to get these chickens separated and stick as many as I can in there. I also have some ground turkey and that will probably go on the top of the drawer. The nice thing about these organizers is it didn't matter how long they were because that divider in my freezer is adjustable. So I just scooted it all the way over so it made a nice snug fit. And this is looking like a perfect game of Tetris here. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I have a little bit of space there at the front of that top drawer where I'm adding ice packs. I like to have frozen ginger on hand and it just fit so perfectly. Here's what it looks like. I love it. Real me to get it going, open me up. Sweet talking like you mean it, but you're making it so complicated. I hate it. Every time I get too close, you push me away. Like I mentioned, you get a two for one in this video. I am doing the downstairs freezer and reorganizing a little bit just because I moved some stuff up and down, brought some food upstairs and changed the organizing system a bit and had some leftover organizers from upstairs that I brought down. So I am using another type of little divider where you can move those dividers for meat on the top drawer and then still had more of those smoothie pouches that I am going to put in a bin that I used to have in our old freezer that fits probably better down here. These bins didn't fit quite as well in this freezer, so pay attention to how yours is shaped. You'll see that harsh angle, that slope there, made it a little bit more difficult because it's not shaped as much like a rectangle. That one edge made it so I couldn't put a third bin, but that's fine. There's extra space there where I could put something else, and there's plenty of space left over in this freezer, as you'll see. Thanks so much for joining me for what I think is one of the quickest organizing projects doing two freezers in one video in, like I said, less than 30 minutes. I encourage you to give your freezer, whether it's new or old, a quick organizing refresh. Check out my fridge organization video if you want some motivation there. And until next time, I will see you all later. 
Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today is a full fridge clean out and reorganization. This is going to be a very, very practical fridge organization video, a fridge clean out video. I know a lot of times I get tempted by those aesthetic fridges that I see on Instagram, maybe on TikTok or Pinterest or any other form of social media. And it seems so desirable to have my refrigerator look like that, but I personally don't find that type of organizing, especially in a place where things turn over so quickly, to actually be practical. So I want this refrigerator to be practical for me. I want what you're seeing here to hopefully be practical for you. And hopefully you can relate to this being a little bit more on the realistic side. So as I'm doing any fridge or freezer organization, I try to take items out in phases. I'm starting with a door. That's always the easiest for me to tackle first. I find it to be a good way to get started with things because it's not as overwhelming as the rest of the refrigerator. So as I pull things out, I am putting them into categories. I'm checking expiration dates and I'm also making sure that they're items that I use. In general, I try not to buy too many ingredients that are specific for just one recipe. That just creates clutter, causes food items to expire, and is a way that you often end up wasting money. So once I have those items all decluttered and categorized, I've pulled all of the bins out of the refrigerator door and I'm going to get some warm soapy water going in one side of my sink and get to scrubbing and cleaning these things off. You're still I do try and clean out my refrigerator often and just wipe it down, wipe the shelves down, sometimes wipe inside some of these bins on the door, especially if I notice that there's a spill or anything like that. But it is so important to do a full fridge clean out and take out everything that you can take out really deep clean it in your sink as often as you can every once in a while. And I'll show you a little bit later why that's so important. I'm using a mild cleaner here to clean off the inside of the door. I try not to use anything that has too much scent to it just because it's inside of the refrigerator. That's where we store our food, of course. So something that is mild and doesn't have a really, really strong scent is typically fine for the inside of the refrigerator. The sun is always shining right. People are smiling, making plans, hiding behind the shades, and you're doing the same. Growing where your heart is fire, but baby, I bet you're cold without me, even when it's 90 degrees. Without me, I bet that you can get in sleep in the bed, lying away. Cause I'm not there beside you, keeping you warm and I know. I bet you're cold. Now I can get all of those parts back on the door. At the top one, I always store my butter. And if I have cream cheese, that goes up there as well. The sun is always shining bright. I'm going to try to organize things on the countertop just so I don't have the refrigerator door open as long. It makes it a little bit more difficult to install them, but that's okay. It makes it pretty easy because I've already gone through and somewhat made categories as I was decluttering these items a little bit earlier as you saw. Now I'm just going to figure out how they fit inside of the bins. Cold. 
I started by putting them up really high to try and fit everything nicely. I did open and close the door a few times just to make sure things fit because I have in the past in different refrigerators as well as this one tried installing things on the door and then if you put it in the wrong spot it hits the inside and doesn't close properly and then I'm just readjusting as I can and spacing them out a bit more. All of these labels that you see here are great because they are reusable. There are a few others that come in the pack that I got that I'm not using here. So they are pretty versatile and again, great because they're reusable and you can peel them off to clean out your refrigerator really well and stick them back on. California. Time to tackle the rest of the refrigerator, pulling things out in phases again, and I want to clean off all of the shelves in the sink, give it a good scrub. I'm trying to conserve water here, so I have half of my sink still with that warm soapy water, and I'm doing a scrub on one side and a rinse out on the other. Blue is the color of when you were leaving, tell me. One of the tough parts, as I mentioned, about a refrigerator is the fact that things are constantly rotating. You may have some staple items and things that you do typically have in your refrigerator or always have in your refrigerator. But in general, if you're like me, you have leftovers rotating in and out depending on what you're cooking at home or your preferences or foods that you're finding on sale at the grocery store. Things are just always rotating. So it's difficult to make too stringent of an organizational system. I would recommend for the items that are in your fridge all the time, finding some sort of a home or some sort of a system so you know maybe what shelf they're on you don't have to have a particular organizer for them but maybe having a particular place where they're typically stored would be helpful for both you and your family to know where to find things in the past I've organized and had a shelf that I like to use for all of my leftovers and foods that are already cooked and prepared and a separate shelf for foods that I am using to prepare meals. So if I buy a thing of mushrooms that I'm gonna put on a homemade pizza, that would be on one shelf versus the shelf that would actually store leftovers of that homemade pizza. Now you'll see why it's so important to do this deep clean and take everything out in the grooves of the shelf. It was so dirty in here. So I stuck my finger there and wiped out all of the stuff that I could. Top shelf I usually have for drinks, sometimes yogurt, if I have cottage cheese and other little dairy products like that. And I love the rollout caddy that I have that I store drinks on, so that is great. And I will link that in the description box if you are interested in any of the organizing products you see here. And if I miss something and you wanna know where something's from, just leave me a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you and provide a link. So the smaller roll-up bin is where I keep all of the foods that are prepared for our one-year-old son. Our nanny knows that everything that's on that little roll-up caddy is fair game for him. It makes it easier for me to prepare meals for him and just to have things that are pre-cut up and appropriate for his age. You'll see there's a few things I was able to declutter and throw away. I decided not to donate them just because they've been used. And then I'm going to go back in the refrigerator and the second I take out this bottom drawer, you can see how 
bad the spill was. I didn't even know that there was something that had spilt in the refrigerator. Can't tell you what this is, but it was very stuck on. There was a lot of liquid. Once I got the liquid away, it wouldn't wipe off that easily. So I got out my soft scrub and my scrub daddy and was able to clean it, but I am mortified by how bad that was. I thought about cutting this clip out, but I want you to see the real life of how bad this was and and hopefully encourage you to clean out your refrigerator even if even if you feel like maybe it doesn't need it because you never know what's lurking behind all of those drawers. You can see the spill continued back up higher. I still was using my scrub daddy. I was using a lot of paper towels here as opposed to my microfiber cloths because I didn't want to stain them and it was just such a complete mess. But finally I got that cleaned out and could go back to the normal routine of cleaning out these drawers in the sink with my warm soapy water and pulling everything out. I'm glad I didn't take any shortcuts as I was cleaning everything out. I thought maybe I could just clean out the bins that had the fruit in it because that's where any of the mess would have been and it wouldn't have been in the drawer. But once I took the organizers out that had the fruit in them, I found that there was still a little bit of a mess inside the drawer. And I was surprised by how many little pieces and things were in the organizers that had the fruit little stems from apples or avocados. And again, just happy that I didn't take any shortcuts and chose to clean it all out the proper way. Then I can fill back up all of these containers. They rotate a little bit. I like to have one for lemons and limes, typically one for apples, one for avocados. But as you'll see, that's not really the case for what I have in the fruit bins today. I have a lot of pears, a bunch of oranges that I don't always have. So not labeling things is sometimes the better option for me. I just know that this bin is for fruits and avocados, I guess, but it rotates and I like to keep like items together, but where it is exactly exactly in the drawer does sometimes change. Ooh, yeah. Let's be honest for a second. Yeah, you'll be in over your head, babe. Cause there is no one other than me that can make you feel the way you feel when I hold you. I think I said enough. Next up is the cheese drawer. I don't do a lot of organizing in here. I've shared that before because I just find it to be such a small drawer and not efficient to do that. Same with the bottom drawer. That's where I put all of my vegetables usually and other fresh produce that doesn't fit in the fruit bin down there. But it is typically veggies, so I'm going to put that veggie label there on the drawer of the fridge as well as the other labels for the other drawers. Don't take it slow, don't be gentle. Just 
Last step is to clean off the outside of the refrigerator and I'm using a stainless steel cleaner there and my microfiber cloth. And then there was a little bit of a break here because I ran to the grocery store. And in addition to the clean out and organization, I'm doing a little bit of a fridge restock with you. So you'll see I bought one more organizer at the store when I picked up my groceries and that was for our milk. Because we have a one-year-old who is now drinking cow's milk, I buy milk in the large jugs. We sometimes buy it from Costco and it takes up so much space in the refrigerator. So I bought a glass pitcher that I can pour the milk into and put the rest of the jug in our basement refrigerator so it doesn't have to take up all of our space. Then you'll see I'm restocking the drawers. I have some veggies that I can put in the veggie drawer. I have some refrigerated pouches for our son that I'm putting in there. And I also have some more fruit to put in the fruit drawer. I'm feeling kind of lost when your mind is hiding Whatever that is choking your chest I can see it in your eyes that you're shaking Cause you're holding it back mm -hmm. Now everything is restocked so here is an after It is not necessarily the perfect perfect aesthetically pleasing refrigerator But it is so functional for me and for my family And you'll see it is real life with those leftovers in there And some space for things to change If you enjoyed today's video I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel for more And until next time I will see you guys later Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to another organizing video where today we're gonna do a pretty quick organizing of both my side-by-side -side freezer and my pull-out freezer in the basement. So it's a double duty freezer video, really quick reorganize. The first thing I'm doing starting upstairs in our main refrigerator is pulling everything out. I'm starting by doing it kind of half and half because when you're working with a fridge or freezer, you don't wanna actually pull everything out all at once because I don't want anything to start melting. And I am going to use a few containers that I already own, some food storage containers and use them to organize my frozen fruit just a little bit better. We're really fortunate that we do have a freezer in our basement as well that I can put some backup stuff and I like to have things that I use more often upstairs and easily accessible and then I can put backup items mostly in the freezer downstairs, which I will show in just a few minutes. So in addition to having those large things of frozen fruit, I am also going to put some of the bananas in the pantry that were starting to go bad. One was really bad and the other few were not quite that bad yet but I typically store them in a reusable silicone food storage bag like this stasher bag. I like this one because it opens up nice and wide and has a pretty big capacity, so I will store that in there. And then I'm gonna pop back into the freezer and see what other things I have in there that I can rearrange. I think I'm just gonna use the bottom drawer for pre-made veggies that are already in their packaging and keep them there. Has a heart as pure, no, not like yours. And then the drawer above it, I have a bunch of frozen food that I've made in advance all for our child. We have an almost 16 month old and I make him a lot of foods from scratch and freeze things. So it's really easy for breakfast or other meals for him to have foods that are really nutritious and I know he'll like and I like him eating. So I'm going to go through all of those Ziploc bags, those freezer bags and reorganize, make sure everything's labeled properly because they weren't all labeled properly. Some things I can combine into smaller Ziplocs and a few things I even pulled out and put in the refrigerator for him to eat tomorrow so they could thaw out a bit. Could spread your love. What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Luckily, I do know what most of these things are. Or even if I don't know 100% maybe what's in the muffins that I made, I know that they're muffins for our child. I would highly, highly recommend anytime you make a freezer meal or freeze anything, you want to label it with what it is, even if you think you're going to remember and the date that you froze it. Gonna let the 
On the door here I have some reusable pouches where I've frozen things in there for him. I can organize those there. And also on the door I have frozen ginger. I really like buying the pre-made frozen ginger because it goes bad so quickly when you buy fresh. It's a little bit more expensive but the convenience is great and probably when you factor in how much ginger I waste. When I buy it fresh it is probably cheaper although you could also buy fresh and grind it up and freeze it yourself. I do have another video that I filmed on all of my different freezer meal tips and if you've seen that video which I will link in the cards above if you're interested in watching that but if you've seen that video you know I'm a huge fan of using stasher bags like these I'm also a huge fan of super cubes which is what I use to freeze this tomato paste and pesto they have a bunch of different sizes and it makes it so easy to make freezer meals or freeze any leftovers that you might have so things don't go to waste and I'm just popping them out so I can clean those and use them at another time and again doing what I talked about earlier, labeling them before I stick them back in the freezer. On the bottom here I also have ice packs and a little bag that you can actually freeze and I take that on the go when we bring snacks and stuff and I want things to stay cold so I'm keeping that at the bottom door of the refrigerator. Now we're downstairs in the basement so you can see how I organize a pull out freezer. You saw how quick it was to do that reorganizing project in the side by side freezer. The pull out one I have a few more organizing tools in here which I will pull out as I'm pulling everything out of the freezer. I use this divider to store my chicken. I buy a lot of our meat in bulk at Costco. It's a lot more economical for us but we do end up with a lot of extra meat so I use most of this freezer to store our bulk meat products. The color of when you were leaving. Tell me, let me know what you feel inside. Cause you don't know me by name. Typically, when I come home from the store, I try to cut everything apart in advance before I freeze it, but sometimes I'm lazy or forget or don't have a lot of time. So I'm just separating everything right now so it's easier to organize and then when it's meal time and I need to grab one or two or however many packages of a certain type of meat, it's a lot easier just to grab and go. Some people say that the path you are choosing I have a second divider on the other side. This one is adjustable. They're actually both adjustable, but I'm going to store my ground turkey and my ground beef in there. I have some little sausages. I also put bacon behind the chicken there. And then there is a little bit of leftover space and I wanna keep all like items together. So I'm putting all of the salmon fillets behind the organizer on the left side of that top drawer. That way the whole top is all of the meats and seafoods and it fits perfectly. The only meat that I wasn't able to fit in there, we have some burgers, but I'm going to put that on the bottom drawer, which is really deep, has lots of space. And I realized that I was actually able to save a bunch of space. And as you saw in my freezer upstairs, I like to keep some empty room in the freezer. If you're ever baking or doing something where you have to pop something in the freezer for a while, or if I run to the grocery store and get something new, it's really important to have some extra breathing room in there. I don't like to keep it super, super packed. 
So you saw all of meat there, and then on the bottom I have some leftovers like tomato soup, some of those things from upstairs that didn't fit, a big jar of pesto, and then let's go upstairs and take a look at the final product there. I hope that you enjoyed today's very quick freezer reorganization and that it inspires you to open your freezer, do a quick reorganizing, and tackle something you may have been putting off for a bit. But that is all for today. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Now this was one of the parts that I was most excited to share and that is how I store my freezer meals because there are so many different ways to do it and I think I have a couple that maybe you haven't heard of before. The most traditional is probably using these like aluminum foil trays and containers. This size is probably what you see most often if you've watched other YouTube videos where people make a bunch of freezer meals or you've read some blogs or you've made some yourself, you've probably used these before. This is great if you have a larger family or if you're okay having leftovers. So if my husband and I are eating food, if I make this for just the two of us, it'll probably last us a couple of meals depending on what the meal is and how dense it is and stuff. So I keep those on hand, but I also keep a smaller size. And sometimes this can just be perfect for the two of us to have one little freezer meal and then there's no extra leftovers. It's just a little bit more of a manageable size. So I like having this size as well. The other more traditional way is to use food storage bags. I have a Ziploc bag here. I use the freezer type. It helps prevent freezer burn. I have gallon size. I also have quart size. Gallon size is again, probably the more traditional size that you see with freezer meals. This is great if you're going to have a bunch of ingredients that you want to dump out and put into an instant pot or crock pot, like I mentioned, or the stove top, anything like that, where you're going to be able to dump it out and cook it into a different vessel of any sort. So these are great. Another thing that you can do is you can just use some of the dishes that you already have. This is a glass Pyrex dish that I have here. It actually does freeze. It has a top on it. This has some cornbread in here. I don't know if you can tell that it's all fogged up because I just pulled it out of the freezer, but I have baked cornbread in here and then just threw the top on it, let it cool completely. That's a really important step is to cool whatever dish that you make completely before you stick it into the freezer. You don't wanna have any sort of cross contamination and you want your food to cool, preferably in the refrigerator like overnight if you even can, before you stick it into the freezer. So use glass dishes if you have those. Don't overthink it too much, but here come some unique finds. If you've followed me for a while, you know I'm obsessed, obsessed with super cubes. I have a few different sizes here. So I have, they have like a half cup tray, a full cup tray, two cups, two tablespoons. They have some for cookie dough. They even have some for breast milk that I've shared before. So I love these because they have all the measurements on the inside of the trays here. So this one is the one cup and it has a measurement for a half cup. It also has 125 milliliters, 250 milliliters. And then I have the two cup trays here, a little bit larger. These are awesome. If you've ever seen me on Instagram, I've shared a couple of times before, I make mini lasagnas in here. And Super Cubes also sells a little ceramic bakeware dish. You can pop out the lasagna after you've frozen it, stick it in their bakery dish, and then go straight to the oven. And what I really like about these is it makes individually portioned freezer meals. So if you have just a little bit of leftovers, or if you just wanna have individual freezer meals, these are the way to go, I am telling you. I like having these when I go out of town. I think it's really nice for my husband to still have some home cooked meals. I know it's not a necessity for me to make all this food in advance for him, but when I do it as I'm cooking, it's not an extra effort. Or if you have picky family members, this is a great way to do it too. So you're not thawing out like one of these giant trays and everyone has to eat the exact same meal. You could say, hey guys, I don't have time to cook tonight. Everyone grab your own little cube of whatever you want for dinner and we can reheat a bunch of things and it's no extra effort for you and everyone gets what they want. So this two cup 
tray is probably the best size if you are going to be doing like the lasagnas and individual portions i find that this fills me up and it fills my husband up sometimes things that i don't know how much we're going to make like i've done jambalaya in here i've frozen hummus in here a lot of times i have their two tablespoon tray here i have little quinoa blocks that i was just talking about freezing quinoa but i use this to freeze baby food because it's a smaller portion but the nice thing about super cubes is that they are reinforced so you can see i can you know hold it on one side it doesn't flop over and it's really sturdy the lids click on and seal really tight and they're just the best solution in my mind they're like my go-to way to freeze freezer meals another way that you can freeze meals that you want to put into a baggie is using a reusable silicone bag this is nice if you are trying to look out for the environment i will say Silicone bags are more expensive, a lot more expensive. So if these are not in your budget, that's okay. There's also reusable freezer bags that you could use as well and clean those out. But if you do go with the silicone, these are dishwasher safe. They're freezer safe, of course. You can cook in them. You can stick them in the microwave. You can boil water in them. They're really versatile, so if you do end up investing in these, I think that there's a lot of other things that you can use them for besides freezing them. So now that we've talked about all of the different things that you can use to store your freezer meals, I wanna talk some more about organization and storage and how you can find your meals and keep them as tidy as possible in your freezer. Now, we talked a lot about Super Cubes, one of my favorite products. They are, I don't know if they did this on purpose, I'm sure they did it on purpose, but the two cup trays that I really like, they fit perfectly into a gallon size Ziploc. So I pop them out of there and like to then store them into a food storage container like this, like a Ziploc bag, and just pop four of them in here individually so I can then reuse the super cubes, put them in the dishwasher, and then use them for more meals. You can also just keep them right in their silicone trays and store them in the freezer that way but they fit perfectly in here. Some of the smaller sizes fit perfectly in a quart size bag. So that is great as well, but I put them in here and then I can kind of like file organize them. And that is gonna be one of my biggest tips when it comes to freezer organization. I don't care if you have a pull out drawer freezer, like you have a French door fridge and freezer, or if you have a side by side, whatever type of freezer you have, if you think about file don't pile so don't pile all of your items on top of each other turn them on their side file them like you would books on a bookshelf you're going to be able to find what you need and keep your freezer so much more organized and when you have like the super cube blocks in the zip blocks like this it makes it a lot easier if you are freezing items directly into a ziploc bag like this you can freeze them flat on a cookie tray but Something that is new to me is this freezer block. These come in two different sizes, one for gallon size Ziplocs and one for quart size. But all you do is you take your baggie here, you stick it in the bottom, kind of roll over the top here, and then you pour your ingredients directly in there. And I know you might be thinking that you've seen those other items that kind of have like prongs and it props open a ziploc bag for you so you can pour all of your ingredients in there and then zip it up and freeze it the cool thing about this part is not only does it hold it open and make it easier as you pour your ingredients in here but you freeze it in this thing so once you're done you know you zip up your ziploc here and then these parts are rubber bands so you pop it off and once you take the two sides apart you have a perfect freezer block that makes it so much easier to organize these things. This is just like one of the smartest inventions to me. So I will have all of these things in the description box below. If you're interested, I will list um, the link that will have the gallon size and the quart size, depending on what you want to freeze. But that's even better than doing a flat freeze on a cookie sheet. The worst thing that you could do is just like take the Ziploc and plop it in your freezer and let it freeze in whatever formation it wants. If anything, just lay it flat and that will be a great help. But this freezer block is a step above that. 
Now, once you have everything frozen, I have a couple of little organizers that I keep in my freezer here. I have one where I have some meats, one where I have some pre-made meals in here just to kind of show you. So this is the smaller size of the aluminum foil containers. Looks like I have some apple crisp. Maybe I'll thaw that out tonight for some dessert. But they both have adjustable dividers here so you can change how far apart everything is depending on what you're freezing. But I love these just to do that file, don't pile. Everything is perfectly organized this way. If you use that freezer block, I could imagine sticking them in here perfectly and having it all organized that way. I have meats in this one, it's a little bit deeper. But you can also just get basic bins and file them that way in a basic bin. But I do like having the dividers and these dividers that are movable. I think it helps a whole lot. And then you can just pop these right into your freezer. I also want to mention the power of plastic wrap and tin foil in the freezer meal process. If you are making breakfast sandwiches or little muffins or using these aluminum trays, I will a lot of times do a layer of plastic wrap first and then some aluminum foil, just trying to eliminate as much air as possible and prevent some of that freezer burn. So if I'm making those breakfast sandwiches, for example, sometimes I'll wrap them in plastic wrap first and stuff before I put a bunch of them into a Ziploc bag. I get questions specifically on breakfast sandwiches, how I reheat them. And my favorite way to do it is to take them out of the packaging that I've frozen them in. I then put them on a paper towel lined plate and put that in the microwave for, I don't know, it kind of depends, maybe like a minute, a minute and a half or so and get it warm. And then I pop it into the toaster oven to crisp it up. And the reason I put it on that paper towel is because it has some moisture that comes out of it. So the paper towel collects that moisture and then it can crisp up in the toaster oven. But the less freezer burn you have, the less water buildup you're gonna have. So use that plastic wrap and tin foil. Sometimes you can use wax paper to keep things separated, but use all of those tools around you to help prolong the life of your freezer meals. Last but not least, simple tip here, but you need to label your freezer meals. I cannot tell you how many times I have frozen a freezer meal or some ingredients and thought to myself, oh, I'm totally gonna remember what's in there. And come to find out, I open up my freezer and I have no idea what I've cooked. I have no idea what I froze. And it could even be from just a week or so ago, but things last in your freezer a long time. So don't rely on your memory label it with what it is. I also like to put the date that I froze the item. Things again, last in the freezer for a long time, but there are certain foods that are gonna expire faster than others and they don't last forever in the freezer. So if you freeze multiple ingredients, like if you're freezing a bunch of tomato sauce and then you freeze more tomato sauce, you wanna use up the tomato sauce that you froze first. So if you have the dates, you can remember that a lot easier than just, again, relying on your memory. So label it with what it is, when you made it, and I even sometimes put on the instructions to reheat it. So let me grab my apple crisp here. So I have the date that I made the apple crisp. I have written out thaw overnight and bake at 350 for 50 to 60 minutes. If you are following freezer specific meals that have a spot on it in the recipe that has the instructions for how to reheat it, just write that out. Sometimes you might not know the specific way to do it and that's okay, don't worry about it. But if you have the instructions and it's written out, it's a lot easier just to write it out on the container that you froze it rather than looking up that recipe again and trying to find it in a scramble, just have it all in one spot. And it is easy if you're using something that's disposable like tin foil or one of your Ziploc bags to just use a permanent marker. If not, you can always use some masking tape. I do that with the super cubes. Sometimes I will like put masking tape on top of the individual cubes where they are at and label what it is because sometimes I'm freezing multiple things and I just stick the masking tape on there right on that with permanent marker. There are some other markers, which I will link in the description box below that wash off that you can use on silicone food storage bags and other things that can wash straight off in the dishwasher or with a little bit of water. Today's video is going to be a refrigerator and freezer organization. We pull everything out, check expiration dates, clean the refrigerator and the freezer and reorganize and put everything back. So if that sounds interesting to you, then let's get going. I bet 
Whenever I do a fridge or freezer, refresh, clean out, organization, whatever it might be, I like to work in stages. Nobody wants to have their fridge or freezer door open for longer than they need to have it open. So I'm gonna start first with the door and just take out all of the products followed by all of the inserts and wash those and sort through everything and check expiration dates. I pulled out all of the containers that were easy to remove and I'm going to wash them in my sink. I'm going to plug one side and use that as kind of the scrubbing zone and then the other side of the sink I am going to use to rinse off those inserts. Before I'm too invested, I should probably ask you, ask you all my questions, get to know you better. Typically when I'm cleaning my fridge, I just do a little bit of a wipe out and then I will do a deeper clean. Sometimes on a monthly basis, I'll try and pull things out and really, really give it a good scrub down. But at least quarterly, I like to take all of the parts out of the fridge and do this. So it's a nice opportunity when I'm organizing it to take care of that deep clean at the exact same time. I would love to hear from you guys. How often do you do a deep clean of your refrigerator like this? How often do you give it just a quick wipe down? It's a really easy place to forget about giving a deep clean, but it's one of the places that really, really needs it and probably needs it more often than most of us do clean it. Just because there is food, there are things dripping in there, and it's inevitable that there are going to be some spills. You'll see this larger container that goes on the door actually has a divider that comes with it. Super nice to have a fridge that has some organizational parts built into it, but I don't love this fridge and freezer combo. My apartment refrigerator and freezer were actually larger than this fridge and freezer in our new house. So a lot of my organizers that I had in my old fridge and freezer did not work. So I had to get some new ones that are a little bit smaller because this fridge is not as deep, especially. So that was a bummer to have to get a few new things, but I'm excited about what I found and I was able to reuse a couple of things that I had from before. This unit is a side-by-side -side fridge and freezer and I'm starting to think that I don't like the side-by-side -side and prefer the fridge on the top and a pull-out freezer on the bottom. That's what we have in the basement. And so if you are somebody that has a side-by-side -side and you want the inspiration and motivation and all of that stuff to go through your side-by-side -side fridge and freezer, this video is for you. If you do have a pull out freezer on the bottom and you're wondering how I'm going to organize that or how I would organize that, I'm going to be doing another video where I'm organizing our basement fridge and freezer, which is the opposite setup. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you stay tuned for that so you can see both setups. Now you'll see I'm going through expiration dates, condiments and other items that I keep in my door typically have really long expiration dates and shelf lives. But if you don't go through them often, they can sneak up on you and you might think that you have a year or six months or something. And before you know it, that time passes up and you have some expired food in your refrigerator. So just double checking all of the expiration dates and most of it looks good, but there are a couple of items that I'm going to get rid of. Even if you don't get rid of everything, it is a reminder to yourself what you have. I say this often with decluttering and going through everything is that it can just be a reminder of what you have. And especially when it comes to food or things that expire, you want to know what you have on hand. You want to know when it expires to encourage yourself to use it up before it goes bad. Roll
Rolex or your credit card. Rolex or your credit card. Now I'm just using a general multi-surface cleaner here in my glass and silicone spray bottles with my microfiber clean cloths. And I'm saying my because I do sell both the microfiber cleaning cloths and the glass and silicone spray bottles. If you're somebody that likes buying in bulk or just decanting your cleaning products or creating your own DIY cleaners, they are great. So make sure to check the description box below for a link to both of those products. In terms of how I'm organizing the products on the door, I'm just trying to put like items together. So at the top there, I'm putting all different types of condiments. I have things like ketchups and mustards and hot sauces and sriracha, all of that. And the next shelf down, I am organizing like items together again, but I'm also being conscious of the depth of the different shelves for the door. So the top two are the deeper shelves and then they get narrow as they go to the bottom. So I have some things that are a little bit wider like my salsa, like this giant thing of garlic and our maple syrup. So I need to make sure that those fit on one of the wider shelves. I'm using the divider here so I have salsa on the right and then everything else on the left and that left hand side is a little bit of a miscellaneous category but that is okay. The next one I'm organizing I have pickles, jalapenos, pepperoncinis, and capers and the following one actually ends up being a lot of different Asian flavors like rice vinegar, oyster sauce, fish sauce, chili paste, and other things like that. The door is done, so it's on to the refrigerator, but before I pull everything out and start organizing it and cleaning it, I recently did a Costco run and I am such a fan of buying all of our meat from Costco. I like to freeze it. I love buying in bulk. I don't go to Costco very often, so when I do, we stock up and I fill up my freezer. That's also why I love having a second fridge and freezer, so I can put more of our frozen meat downstairs. And if you are somebody that likes to freeze meat and things like that, I will share how I organize it in my next video. I put this flank steak into freezer safe Ziplocs into two separate portions because it comes into two separate pieces anyway. And I just weigh it and put the weight of how much meat is in each bag right there on the Ziploc. And that way when I go to prepare a meal, I can know the actual weight of the meat and not the meat frozen and any other ice that may have formed and kind of changes the weight of the meat there. And it helps when I'm making a recipe that calls for, let's say, one pound of flank steak or whatever it might be.
So I brought that downstairs and now it is truly time to go through the refrigerator and I'm starting by pulling it all out like I did with the door. I did kind of pause when I hit the cheese drawer because the bottom part of the refrigerator is all drawers. So I decided to just do half at a time, do the top portion and close the door so I could clean off the shelves and then put stuff back and then I could go to the drawers and do the same thing. So while I'm cleaning off these shelves here, I do want to share that this video is sponsored by Share a Cart. I'm really excited because Share a Cart is something that helps me and it helps you. It is a free Chrome extension and it allows you to share your online shopping list from a bunch of different retailers with one link. So what I am going to do is I am going to put together all of the organizers that I'm sharing today in the fridge and freezer in a Share a Cart link. That way you can click on it. You don't have to go to a bunch of different places and you can see exactly the products that I have used in my fridge and freezer today and shop with that one easy link. Like I said, makes my life easier, makes your life easier, but this isn't really the only application that you can use share a card. I've mentioned share a card before and worked with them in the past when I've done a sophisticated Saturday video and shared my grocery shopping list with you guys that way. It's just a really great way to share different lists and shopping carts with others, maybe a wish list if you do want to reorganize your fridge and freezer and you're loving the products that I end up using today. Maybe you could shoot this link over to a spouse or somebody else and hope that they might buy you some of these items to organize your fridge and freezer. So don't forget to check the link in the description box below for my share a cart link and you can shop all of the products and you can even create your own shopping list to share with others. Now I can put those shelves back into the refrigerator. I really like this one shelf because it has part of it that can extend out or retract back into the back part of the refrigerator. If you have something on the shelf below it, that's a little bit taller. So it kind of gives you an option, but you do need to be careful with it because it does tend to be a little bit wobbly if you're not careful and you put something on that front portion of the shelf that can retract back. I did make that mistake when we just moved in and the refrigerator was very very new to me and I didn't know that the shelf did that.
The first organizer I'm cleaning off is the one that I store all of my different nut milks. I have oat milk, almond milk, coconut milk, and then I always have one oat milk that I use that is better at frothing for things like lattes and stuff like that. So I have a lot of alternate milk options and I like to keep them all stored together in this really convenient rollout caddy so I can just grab the front, roll it out, and grab exactly whatever I need. I also have another smaller rollout caddy. These are great. These fit in my old refrigerator in my apartment as well as in this refrigerator. So really whatever size fridge you have, hopefully these will work for you. And I love the fact that the back part has wheels. And like I said, you can just roll it right out. This one I used to have for dairy products like string cheese and stuff in our old apartment and I had a label on it. So I just peeled that off and now I put some overnight oats in there. I don't think I'm going to label it just because I want it to rotate with what I'm using. I don't always have overnight oats. I don't always have string cheese and things like that. So it just rotates and I'm going to leave it label because you'll see the overnight oats didn't even fit in there very well. So I'm going to probably put something else in there instead. The other containers that I'm using are to keep produce fresh. They come in a variety of sizes. This smaller size, I'm putting cherries into it and you'll see that it has both vents and an option to add water. And it has a chart for all of the different things that you might put into the container, whether you should open the vents or not, or whether you should add water at the bottom to prolong the shelf life of whatever food you're putting in there. So these are great. Another thing I love to use in a refrigerator, which might surprise you, is a Lazy Susan. It's a a really easy way to access things that might be stuck in the back of your fridge. You just rotate that Lazy Susan and you can grab whatever you need. When organizing my fridge shelves, I like to have one shelf that's more for leftovers and another shelf that's more for ingredients that I need to prep. So I'm trying to leave some extra space knowing that I will have leftovers all the time. I'm constantly cooking different foods and we always have leftovers. Love making dinner and having the leftovers for lunch the next day. So account for things like that if you are organizing your fridge just be mindful do you have the maximum amount of groceries that you usually have in your refrigerator or when you're organizing it do you maybe have less than you usually have and you need to save space for items that you don't currently have but usually have now we're onto the drawers i have tons and tons of cheese a variety of different reasons why I have so many cheese. First of all, I love cheese, but second of all, with our baby, I tried to go dairy free for a while. So a lot of this cheese wasn't being used for a while, really needed to check expiration dates. And I found a few things that were expired. And I also bought some dairy-free alternatives when I wasn't eating dairy. I'm now back to eating dairy. It didn't work to help our little baby that much with his spitting up. So back to dairy, I will still probably use up those cheese alternatives, but there were some expired cheeses I needed to toss. I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. Thinking of you. With the three drawers, the way that I'm going to organize it is the top drawer that's fixed in there. That's for all of our dairy and cheese. The next drawer down, I am going to put our most used fresh produce that we always have. And this is what I did in my last apartment. And then the bottom is going to be any other fresh produce. I never use any organizers in the cheese drawer. It is a waste of time to me. The drawer itself is so narrow and thin that it doesn't really need one. And in the refrigerator, you need to be really careful not to over organize.
This drawer wasn't too dirty, so I just sprayed it with my multi-surface cleaner and gave it a wipe out with my microfiber cleaning cloth. And then I bought new organizers that fit this fridge drawer a whole lot better than my old ones. And this is what I'm talking about, about our most used produce. I am constantly using lemons and limes when I'm cooking or putting lemon in my drink, but mostly for cooking, I use them all the time. So I have one container for lemons and limes. We always have tons of apples. So one part is for apples. And then the last one, we always have avocados. So I put avocados in there and sometimes I will stick in things like oranges as well. But in general, it's lemons and limes, apples, and then avocados. I might be shaky. I might be weak. My words may fail. In that bottom drawer, you'll see that's what I was talking about with other produce. I have some lettuce, cabbage mix, Brussels sprouts, green onions, whatever I have for the recipes that week. I also had some cilantro I'm going to put in one of the reusable containers. And I want to show you an example of the larger container and how big it is and what it can hold. Here is the after you'll see I did leave extra space like I mentioned for leftovers and other food because while my fridge wasn't empty right now it definitely was not as stocked as it can be or is after I do a grocery run so I was really conscious of that. It's time for the freezer I'm going to do the same thing pull items out in sections and the first section I'm going to do is the top two shelves it's a lot of my smoothie items and then things that i have frozen into my super cubes and stasher bags which i will explain as we're going through them So for my smoothies, I like to have frozen bananas. I just break them in half and stick them into a silicone reusable bag. These are my stasher bags and I can easily pop in half of a frozen banana into a smoothie or I also like to make nice cream. If you haven't heard of nice cream, it is basically a fake ice cream made out of bananas. So it's healthy for you or a lot healthier than regular ice cream. And you can do that in a high-speed blender or with a specific machine that I will also link using the share a cart link so you can shop that as well. You'll see I also have some frozen cubes of Greek yogurt. Some are strawberry, some are plain. And the way that I froze those cubes was using my super cubes. They come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. Again, all of this, the stasher bags, the super cubes, the organizers from the fridge, all will be linked using that share cart link below. On that top shelf, you'll see, I was trying to figure out if I could fit everything that relates to my smoothies up there, but I decided I had more than I thought I did. I forgot I had that extra bag of frozen fruit and a little bag of frozen avocados. So I'm doing all of that as well as my pre-made smoothies on the top. And then below that, I have my stasher bags neatly lined up, file folded instead of stacked on top of each other. Always, always organize by storing things vertically if you possibly can it makes it really easy to pull things out kind of like a bookshelf just slide out exactly what you need instead of upsetting the apple cart and pulling one thing out and everything topples over that was stacked on top of it I'm trying to create categories and purpose for the rest of the freezer. So that drawer there, I am doing all of my seafood, which is usually just salmon and shrimp. You'll also see I like to take things out of my super cubes once they've frozen so I can reuse them for other things. I froze small little cubes of pesto for recipes. I like to put it on pizza. It's a lot easier to freeze it this way as opposed to freezing the whole jar because the jar that I get is from Costco and I never want to defrost an entire jar that's just way too much pesto so i'm putting them into a stasher bag and on that second shelf with the other stasher bags In your eyes, 
I'm also breastfeeding, so it's important for me to have some breast milk in the freezer there. I just got that organizer as well, so I will make sure to link that too. And I have a few things that are frozen vegetables, frozen meatballs, put those up there. And then the bottom two drawers here in the main section of the freezer, chicken is our most used protein. It needs a whole dedicated drawer. And then the bottom one, I have some ground beef, ground bison, and ground turkey, which didn't quite fit. So I ended up putting the ground turkey with the chicken. The door here was a bit of a miscellaneous mess. It's a lot of baked goods that I have previously frozen. I had frozen pancakes and some frozen sunshine bread. I put those in the door for quick, easy access for a breakfast or a snack. And then a couple of other random frozen items followed by on the bottom, I have all of our ice packs. And here's the after of the freezer. Honestly, this was not that difficult to do. I'm hoping that after seeing this, you got some ideas for different organizational concepts that you can implement in your fridge and freezer. The last thing I want to do before I finish this video and before I call this job complete is to clean off the outside. We did a really good deep clean of the inside of fridge and freezer. So I'm going to use some stainless steel spray and wipe it off and call this good. downstairs here in my basement I have the refrigerator on top and a pull-out drawer freezer so hopefully you get a little bit of inspiration depending on what type of fridge or freezer you have if you have a basement one like I do or one that you maybe have in your garage that you use for more beverages and backup stuff then that's what we're gonna be organizing today so let's get going I don't have a ton of stuff in this refrigerator except for this giant jar of pickles. My dad got that for me when he came to visit when we first moved in. I have no idea why. I guess I was pregnant. Maybe that's why I like pickles. I don't love pickles, but we're slowly moving our way through that jar. But I do keep it in the basement as opposed to upstairs just because of its size. Once everything's out, I am wiping down the shelves and the walls with some multi-surface cleaner and a microfiber cloth. You'll see if you watched my upstairs refrigerator and freezer organization, I took all of the drawers out, all of the components that I could and washed them in the sink with soapy water. Here I'm not doing that because we just moved in in September and we really haven't used this fridge as much except for backup items. So there's not a lot to really clean. Very unlikely that anything has spilled in here or there are any crumbs. I will say though, I like this fridge and freezer a lot better than our upstairs fridge and freezer just because of all of the features that it has. I showed that little sliding part for organizing on the door, all of the mats come out. It is just a really nice fridge and freezer and I think I like the double doors here and the pull-out freezer on the bottom. The things that I keep in our basement refrigerator are a lot of extras. So I like to have butter. Butter doesn't go bad very quickly so I like to have it just in case I need it so I can always whip up a batch of cookies if somebody's coming over or any little baked good because I like to have that when I have guests or maybe I need to stop by somebody's house and drop something off. So that just makes it easier and I 
also have some of my backup almond milks and oat milks and other nut milks. The other thing I wanted to start putting in here is having some sparkling waters. I do personally really like sparkling waters. I don't like to drink them myself at home that often because it's just really expensive to drink sparkling waters. It's kind of wasteful to have a bunch of individual waters, but when you have guests over, it is nice to be able to offer them an option, especially if they want a non-alcoholic beverage and have a bunch of different drinks for them to pick from. So that was part of my idea here. The organizing that I'm doing today really isn't your typical fridge organization. If you have only one refrigerator, you might not have room to do something like this, but if you have a basement where you have an extra refrigerator, maybe you just have a beverage refrigerator or if you have a garage refrigerator that you use this could be a fun option I like having organizers in my refrigerator and if you saw my organizing video from upstairs then you know that I like having them but I also don't like to overdo it if you don't need to. You can easily get some can organizers. There are lots out there that help keep your cans really nice, neat, and organized, but I just don't need that, and I don't want to spend the money, buy the extra things. I know sometimes people comment about organizers and how wasteful they are and harmful for the environment with all of the plastic. So if you don't need an organizer, don't feel like you have to purchase one. You'll see how pretty this looks when I'm done without buying any sort of organizer for these cans. I simply put them in rainbow order and it did take a little bit of arranging and rearranging to get there. The nice thing is these shelves on the refrigerator are completely adjustable so it made my job a lot easier that I could make them really close together to give myself still that optimal amount of space below the cans. I've used that space before when I've baked a cake and needed to store it before people came over and had larger items that I I just couldn't fit in my refrigerator upstairs so I want to keep that space free and open for entertaining and other times that I might have overflow food. Jim had just a couple of cans of beer there. He likes to have beer for when his friends come over. We probably need to restock on that and I'll do something similar on the other side of the refrigerator, but we only had a few cans for now. There were still some leftovers that I didn't feel like I needed to stuff into the fridge, so I will put those into a cabinet in the back there and then be able to restock them as people continue to drink our sparkling waters. I know that was fast, but that was it for the quick refrigerator organization, and I'll show you what it looks like now. This is the after. Very simple, lots of leftover space. I may end up even moving those oat milks to the door. I know the door isn't the coldest place, but that's probably cold enough, especially because we're not opening and closing the refrigerator to keep that optimal space, like I mentioned, on the lower down parts. And how nice is this feature that opens and closes? We actually have the same thing in our refrigerator upstairs. Onto the freezer. This is actually pretty organized already. I did organize it when I made a bunch of freezer meals when I was pregnant, getting ready for postpartum. Although I have eaten some of those and I've added extra things, so I need to quickly go through it and do a little bit of reorganizing and I'll show you how I do it. What I store in the freezer down here are extra frozen meats. I keep most of them upstairs so I can use them to cook, but we buy at Costco and so there's always going to be back stock and extras upon extras. So the overflow I keep down here, I use two organizers down here and the first one I use for meat. I love that it has adjustable dividers so I can get the perfect fit for everything. So 
So on one side of this divided top drawer, I put that meat in the divider that I have and then the bacon I stick at the back or any extra meat goes back there too. The other thing that I keep in our basement refrigerator are some of our freezer meals. These smaller containers are perfect for a meal for two. It's all Jim and I need and this other freezer organizer keeps them upright. It makes them nice and neat and looks like they're file organized. I love it. So I put that in the other side and I face the words out so I can see exactly what I want to grab for dinner and sort through quickly and know how many freezer meals I have and what I have in the freezer. The bottom ends up being miscellaneous stuff so I just threw some frozen cranberries in there extra frozen fruit I buy stuff when it's on sale especially when it comes to the freezer so stock up on what I can especially because I have the space and here is what the final after of the freezer looks like very nice and neat two organizers that's it I will say these organizers work great whether you have a pull-out drawer freezer or a side-by-side -side fridge and freezer Anytime that you can sort your items side by side as opposed to stacking them on top of each other, it's going to make it a lot easier. Whenever I get questions about different types of freezers, deep freezers, drawer freezers, door freezers, how do you organize? Think side by side. And these two organizers make that easy and simple and take care of it for you. As you can see, the last thing I'm doing is cleaning off the fridge and freezer doors and the drawer and the little edges and handles and everything that I can with my stainless steel cleaner and then I can call it good for the day. It was so quick and easy. Don't worry if you're craving more. I have more fridge and freezer organizing videos that I will link below if you want to keep watching and keep getting inspiration to get your fridge and freezer organized. That you're distant There's something about you that's different I see it in your eyes Something is Today I'm going to start with the door and that means taking absolutely everything out. That's the only way to really deep clean your refrigerator is to pull everything out and the containers that are on the door are super easy for me to pop out as well. So I'm going to grab those and then start to go through my food and check expiration dates and see if there's anything that I can toss. I'm also grabbing a notepad and marking things that I'm running low on or that are actually expired that I need to purchase from the grocery store. That way, the next time I go, I know exactly what I need to replace. It is a lie when you tell me That nothing is wrong, just leave it be But I see it in your eyes Something isn't right Tell me again what I'm missing Cause you're afraid After going through all of the condiments and other items that I keep on the door, I'm going to clean those units that attach to the door, just putting on my rubber gloves and I'm going to clean them with simple dish soap and water.
This is really the best strategy when you're fully deep cleaning your refrigerator. You can always, if you're not interested in doing a complete fridge deep clean, just take a multi-surface or multi-purpose cleaner and clean out those containers with a microfiber cloth or a rag or something and just wipe them down as needed. But it's really not that much extra work to take those products out and really give them a good clean in the sink. something's off the way you look and how you pause when you talk i think you said enough you said you love for me something brand new you said this is something you would never do here we are in your car let me see who you are who you really are I'm also going to take this opportunity to clean off the door without anything obstructing it. And I'm using my force of nature cleaner. I really like the fact that this cleaner is completely non-toxic and safe to use in your refrigerator, especially in a place where I'm going to be eating the food or spraying anything on surfaces that I might be eating off of or something. I like using this cleaner because I feel more comfortable that it's a safer non-toxic option. I'm going to load everything back up in the containers that go on the door while they're on the countertop. That way I don't have to keep the refrigerator open as long and expose the rest of my food to the warm air or waste energy. And this is the pile of items that I can get rid of. They're either expired or things that I'm being honest with myself and I know I'm not gonna use at all or just before it expires. Even though I'm doing my best to arrange items on the countertop, sometimes when I put it into the refrigerator based on the height of those items that go on the refrigerator door, I do end up rearranging things, but it does help to get it done on the countertop first. Let me know in the comments below how often you give your refrigerator a complete deep clean like this, where you pull absolutely everything out, take any drawers out or anything else that you can out and clean it in the sink versus just giving those shelves a little wipe down with a little bit of a cleaner and a rag. I do the cleaner and the rag method actually quite often when I notice that there are some crumbs or a spill or anything, but I need to be better about doing a deep clean of the refrigerator because as we pan up through the refrigerator, you'll see all of the crumbs and really how gross it is in there. So I'm going to grab my vacuum cleaner to get the crumbs out and I'm just gonna use that little detailing attachment so I can get in all of the nooks and crannies of my refrigerator. It's honestly easier that way to use the vacuum and get those little parts up so I'm not just moving them around or anything. The vacuum cleaner sucks them up and gets them out of the way. I'm pulling all of the glass shelves out as well to give them a deep clean. Pulling the glass shelves out always makes me so nervous. You wanna be really careful with them and you don't wanna break them. Breaking one of those glass shelves and having to pay for a replacement part is super expensive. So delicacy is very important here. I'm still using the Force of Nature cleaner on the rest of the inside of my refrigerator and wiping down all of the surfaces that I'm not going to take out as well as the inner walls.
With a fully clean refrigerator, I'm gonna start adding those parts that go back into the door on the door and testing to make sure it closes as I'm going because even though there are little racks throughout the door, if I place them on certain ones, I know from experience it doesn't close. After that, it's back to scrubbing the glass shelves. Again, like I mentioned, being as careful as possible. They don't fully fit in my sink, so I wanna be really delicate as I'm moving them around and then, of course, as I'm drying them. I'm putting them back one by one, closing the refrigerator in between just to limit the amount of time that that refrigerator is open again. I know you can turn your refrigerator off. I just don't wanna go through that. I'm working quickly and keeping the door closed as much as possible. The first time that you stood me up, I wasn't ready, yeah, never ready. Like a First up, I have the cheese drawer. I know I'm gonna keep that the exact same, so I'm going through checking expiration dates and putting everything back. The next easiest for me is to go through all of my beverages. I just keep them in a small little organizer here. It keeps things nice and contained for me. I have coconut milk, almond milk. I had a little bit of pomegranate juice in there and I just put it on the top shelf and have it all contained in one spot. Last time I organized my refrigerator and added this pullout caddy and the Lazy Susan, I didn't really have a method to the madness with what I wanted to put on them. So I decided I'm gonna use this little pullout caddy for my dairy products, usually yogurt. Sometimes I'll have string cheeses or something like that, but it makes the most sense for me to put my yogurt on there and then dips and spreads and that type of stuff I'm going to put on the Lazy Susan. Moving on to eggs, I wanted to clean out these egg containers, so I'm going to pull out all of the eggs, put them on a cloth so they don't roll off of the countertop, and we have a tragic accident with one of the eggs. And you'll see I have the large egg container. That was something new I purchased the last time I organized my refrigerator, and I really enjoy having the larger size. That way I can purchase more than just a dozen eggs. I can purchase 18 or even more and not worry about keeping the backup packaging that it comes in. So I really enjoyed that, and I have kept the smaller egg container that I used to have, and so many of you gave me the great advice to hold on to it and to use it for hard-boiled eggs. So I had been using it sometimes for excess eggs if I had a ton of eggs in the refrigerator, sometimes hard-boiled eggs, but I think it makes the most sense to actually dedicate it to hard-boiled eggs. And you'll see in a little bit, I'm going to make some labels for these and label them with their respective labels. So even though I know which eggs go where, that way my husband will know which eggs are which. There would be nothing worse than trying to crack into a hard-boiled egg just to find out that it is not a hard-boiled egg.
Even though I've gone through and deep cleaned my refrigerator and organized the whole thing before, this is just to show you that when you do a space once, it doesn't necessarily mean it's done, especially when it comes to cleaning. Of course, with cleaning, you're going to have to deep clean spaces over and over and over again. A refrigerator for sure, those get really dirty. But even with organization, if you organize something once, that doesn't mean it's done. Oftentimes it takes multiple passes through a certain space to make sure those organizational systems really work for you. When we talk about decluttering, a lot of times the first pass of decluttering a space, you can always do better the second time and be a little more strict with your declutter and get rid of even more. So with this second time around of refrigerator organization, I'm perfecting it and making it even better than the first time. So I decided to amp it up a little bit and add some custom labels to a few of my containers. So I have lemons and limes and apples as well as avocados. We always have those things in our refrigerator and I have since come to understand that and what my husband and I like to eat as a couple and as a family. We've only been married and living together since July. So in that amount of time, I know exactly what we keep in the refrigerator and the lemons and limes and the apples and the avocado categories are pretty much standard. I'm also doing exactly what I said I was gonna do. I'm labeling that larger egg container and I'm just putting the word eggs there. And then for the other container, I did print out a label that said hard boiled eggs, but it is clearly way too large. So I was thinking maybe does it fit boiled eggs or hard boiled? And the thing that made the most sense was just boiled. I of course could have made a smaller label, but I wanted the font size to be consistent. So I wanted the one that said eggs and the smaller container for hard boiled eggs to be the exact same size. So boiled works just fine. And I'm also going to toss on a dairy label for that rollout caddy. The last few things we need to do to make our refrigerator organization and clean out complete is to clean the outside of the refrigerator. So I'm giving the whole thing a wipe down. And oh my gosh, this is a reminder to clean out the spot. If you have a refrigerator that dispenses ice and water, make sure you clean out that space. If you have little water that drops out of there, it can get really gross and moldy. So don't forget to clean that area often. With that, let's look at what the inside of the refrigerator looks like after the clean out and organization. Let's start off by taking a look at the refrigerator before. I definitely let it get a little bit messy knowing that I was going to reorganize everything. So you'll see that there are quite a few things in here out of place and it's not necessarily how it looks all the time. And I would good the way we are. Now the first thing that you need to do every time you're organizing your fridge or freezer is pull everything out. So I'm gonna start by just taking everything out of the main area followed by the door. Today we're just focusing on my refrigerator. Previously I did a video where I organized my freezer so I will make sure to link that in a card above if you're interested in checking that out and seeing some freezer motivation because that actually turned out really well. I've had it like that for over a month now and it's been working great for us.
I try and pull out everything of the refrigerator that I can, so that includes the glass shelves, so I can put them in the sink and give them a really nice deep clean. Some things are more of a burden to get out than they're worth, so I just clean them while they're in the refrigerator. But the things like the glass shelves are so easy for me to just pull right out and stick them into the sink and give them a good scrub. Before I'm too invested, I should probably ask you, ask you all my questions, get to know you better. Why can you be trusted? Will you take me for credit? And will you let me down? Before I'm too invested, you should take it easy. Maybe we So my refrigerator is pretty tight and narrow here. I live in an apartment, so it's an apartment size refrigerator, but for an apartment it is relatively large, so these drawers are pretty difficult for me to get out. So I'm just gonna wipe them down while they're in the refrigerator and not worry about it too much. We've only lived here since July, so it's really not that dirty. I would be concerned if I made too big of a mess in the refrigerator already. So a quick wipe down will do of most of the surfaces. Now it's time to take everything out of the door and then I'm gonna clean the door part out as well. The door is usually where I keep a lot of my condiments and things like that and there's really no order to the way that I store things there. So I'm excited to try and figure out a new strategy for how I store things in the door. So these are all of the organizing products that I have for this new project. I'm gonna start by putting them in the refrigerator without anything in there, just so I can place the products and try and figure out where things go best and then start to fill them up with items from my refrigerator. That's really a great tip when you start any new organizing project is to figure out where the things go first before you fill it up. Sometimes you have more containers than you need. Sometimes you need more containers. Sometimes they don't fit in your space properly and they're not the right type of containers. So it's best to do this step first. At this point, I feel like I have a plan in my mind, so I'm gonna start with the easiest things first that I know exactly how I wanna organize. And the first thing is my new egg container. You'll see I bought one that's much larger than the one I had before. I always have so many eggs, so this larger container will hold plenty more eggs. And because it does match the smaller one, I wasn't planning on this, but I think I'll keep the smaller one as well. So if I have a bunch of eggs on hand, I can actually have both of them and be able to throw away the cartons right away. Yeah, 
Next up, I have these produce keepers. I've shared them with you guys before. I've had them for a while. I actually got them from Costco. I don't believe they sell them at Costco anymore, but I should have them linked in the description box below. I think they're sold at Amazon as well. So I'm going to pull out my lettuce and my Brussels sprouts, put them in these produce containers, and then read the top to see if the vents need to be open or if water should be added to the bottom because it has a handy little guide on top based on the types of fruits or vegetables you store in there and exactly how to store them for optimal freshness. So the next easiest place for me to organize that I know exactly in my head the vision that I want is where I keep our apples, our lemons and limes, and our avocados. So we always tend to have those three things on hand. So I wanted to have new containers that really fit these three things and fit the drawer in the refrigerator that we have now. You'll see I had them in these square containers before and they were actually old produce keeper containers. So that mesh basket would fit in the larger clear basket and you can see that they were actually broken. So I really wanted to get rid of those. They didn't fit in the drawer very nicely. So these three new organizers work perfectly. Now I have some sparkling water and I'm gonna break out a new organizing product. This is super cool if you especially don't always have canned goods on hand, but sometimes you do and you wanna organize them. You can see how this little organizer from Ucopia actually breaks apart. So it doesn't take up a bunch of room in your refrigerator. So once you're done with all of the drinks, you can easily take it apart and move it out of there to make way for other stuff. You can also make it as short or as long as you want. So my refrigerator goes back pretty far. So I just extended it all the way and took advantage of that space. Now to fill up the cheese drawer, there's really no method to that madness. I don't have any organizers in there, just making sure everything's nice and neat. I did get one larger lower profile bin for all of my drinks to sit at the top of my refrigerator. And I like the lower profile because it makes it easier to pull them out of the bin. If it has a higher lip on it, it's pretty hard to pull things up and out. So this lower profile is great for my beverages. Again, I'm doing everything in order of what's easiest for me just to kind of get things moving. So I know I like to keep butter at the top, so I'm gonna stick the butter right in there. And then it's time to start tackling the doors. So I decided I wanted to still do most of my condiments and stuff like that on the doors, but I decided to play around with the idea of doing them in rainbow order. I've tried before to do things by sauces, spreads, jams, things I use for cooking and create all these different categories. But honestly, sometimes it's hard for me to figure out if it's a sauce or a spread or a jam or a jelly. So I thought this would be really fun. I know it's visually appealing and pleasing to do things in rainbow order. So I'm gonna give this a try and see how it goes. The green category was pretty easy. Just tossed three things in there and it was full. Oh. 
So these next two organizers are both from Utopia, and they're really cool. I love the Fridge View Lazy Susan. It looks really sleek in the refrigerator. And then this other organizer actually has wheels on it. So it's super easy to pull it out of the refrigerator and see what you have because of those wheels. And just like that, we're done. So now we can take a look at what the door looks like after. And I love the Roy G. Biv. I love the rainbow order. I think it looks super neat and tidy and it's probably something I'm gonna keep around. So now we'll look at some before and afters of the different spaces and see exactly what I did. This rolling bin is everything. Look how easily it slides out. I can grab exactly what I need. We ain't got the time. So my freezer was pretty stuffed to start with and that's mostly because I just went to Costco yesterday and whenever I go to Costco the biggest thing that we buy there is meat and I freeze all of it. We have no problem with frozen salmon, frozen chicken, frozen ground turkey, ground beef, all of that. The prices at Costco are pretty good and we both like eating meat, so I just stock up every single time I go to Costco so I don't have to go there as often. But I will say this is the most meat I will have in the freezer at any given time. This is completely stocked up and potentially slightly overstocked up for us, especially when you look at it all on the countertop like that. That looks like a ton. So I ordered three bins from the container store and I will link them in the description box below, but I wanted to try and kind of play around with which things worked best in them and figure out how to best organize the products. So this is really frustrating because I always try and separate and cut apart all of my chicken breasts and meat products from Costco before I freeze them just because the margin of error is so small between the two packages and if you freeze it first and then try and cut it later sometimes the way it freezes it's really hard to get the scissors in between so I would definitely recommend cutting then freezing. If 
If you haven't tried the frozen salmon from Costco, I would definitely recommend it. It's one of our favorites. We both really like salmon and it's something I would honestly probably even serve at a dinner party. You can't really tell that it's frozen salmon and it's great. A difficult part always of fridge and freezer organization is working as quickly and efficiently as you can because you definitely don't want to keep those doors open for too long because you don't want your food being exposed to the regular air temperature but also of course you want to save as much energy and electricity as you can. So you'll see with my smoothies, I did have them in a little bit of a shorter container and I wanted to play around with whether they fit better in one of the old containers. But this short container was the only bin that I had in my last freezer. So this concept of using bins to organize my freezer is definitely new to me. But this short one actually works really well in a spot in the freezer that has a light behind it where I can't fit the long bins like they fit on every other shelf. And I do like to do some pre-packaged smoothies, especially there's this one smoothie that I really like that I will be sharing with you guys in my upcoming smoothie video, but it has butternut squash in it and that is a pain in the rear to measure when it's already frozen. So I measure it when I cook it and then freeze it right away in those freezer bags. And I do hope to get more stasher bags or reusable silicone Ziploc type bag so I don't have to be so wasteful with Ziploc baggies, but I don't have them yet. I'm hoping to get them at some point, but I will link the stasher bag in the description box below because the one that I have, I always use for frozen bananas and love it. You can stick it in the dishwasher. It's great. So I don't have a ton of frozen veggies, but I do want a separate container just for frozen veggies because I do always have something on hand and it will leave me a little bit of room to grow. So I do have a lot of frozen fruit and I have always loved putting the frozen fruit because they come in such large bags at the bottom of the freezer in that pull out drawer. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and fill it up with all my fruit. Don't mind me while I sneak a blueberry that I spilled. So last but definitely not least is the door of the freezer. And here I just have some butter, 
that pesto that I really like from Costco. And then I have some individual packs of frozen grapes. Honestly, kind of an impulse buy. I probably won't buy them again. So once they're eaten up, this spot will probably be empty. And at the bottom, I have all of my ice packs. Labels are always the finishing touch and I always get questions about where I get my labels from and I actually make them myself. So if you ever are interested in a custom label set, just make sure to reach out to me at sophisticatedorganization at gmail.com and we can always talk about a custom label set for you. But I think the labels totally pulled this freezer together. It did look organized with the bins, but the second I put those labels back on and stepped back and looked at everything, I'm in love with it. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram or on YouTube for a while, you know that I like using the freezer as much as possible, especially for meal prepping. And you'll see I only have one freezer meal left right now, and it's in that tinfoil casserole dish. And that spot I can easily stack one or maybe even two more dishes on top of it. But I also have room right next to my veggie container for other smaller frozen meals or any little items I might need to stick in there. So this freezer does definitely leave a little bit of space for me to put some more items in there. Stuck on the ocean now, nothing but waves in this villain in. I wanna dry up, but to just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here. All my reasoning have disappeared. I wanna bury the hatchet and find the way back to our home, our home, our home. We don't have to drift inside this dome. Let us fade away. On to cleaning out my refrigerator and I haven't done this in a while so I'm gonna start by going through the refrigerator door and all of the different condiments I have and making sure that nothing's expired and everything that I'm keeping is something that I use and actually cook with. Then I'm gonna take out all of the drawers and everything that I can remove from the refrigerator and scrub it down.
It's times like this that I really wish I had a big, large farm sink instead of one of these sinks that's divided. It does help to have a divided sink when you wanna plug one half and do some dishes, but whenever I have any large baking sheets or jobs like this, I honestly don't know what to do and basically have to scrub everything on my countertop. I don't have a ton in my refrigerator right now, but that makes for perfect timing to do a deep clean. That way there's not as much to pull out. And even without a bunch of stuff, you can tell that I like to have my refrigerator as organized as possible, especially with the produce. I like to throw away any of those plastic baggies that you may get at the grocery store and put produce into divided bins. 